Edward Snowden has not just revealed how the US spies on its own citizens, it's also exposed the way the world's superpower eavesdrops on its allies. Europeans have been outraged by US espionage against them, and it has been extensive. In the case of Germany, the US sifts through half a billion phone calls, emails and the like every month. It all paints a picture of the critics of America say is hypocritical and arrogant. I'm joined now by Dr. Adam Lockyer, lecturer in US politics and foreign policy at the US Study Centre at the University of Sydney. Nice to have you here. Um, uh, let's look first of all about the overall case against America here. Has this been embarrassing for the states to have all of this aired? It has been, and particularly with the relation to its allies. So mm. the United States is very keen to share intelligence with its allies, and it can't keep a lid it can keep its own secret secret, and then it can't keep its allies' secrets secret. And, and this, is a, this is a big problem. And it raised a lot of concern in countries like Germany, for instance, that have long memories of the Stasi and the Nazis and the use of information against citizens there. So mm. seeing the US involved in this type of espionage must be very concerning. Um, to an extent. So, I mean... Allies know that the United States keeps tabs on what they do. Um, it knows that the United States keeps on tabs on its enemies, but also its friends. Now, the concerning thing here is, well, if they have a few people within the US government who are going to go out and spread the secrets, mm. then, well, maybe they're not just going to be spreading the United States secrets, but also their friends' secrets like Germany, Australia, um, Canada and others. And that's where someone like Edward Snowden comes in because he's not just uh, released information, he's travelling the world now with computers that the Chinese certainly have had access to them, the Russians have had access to them, and who knows what's on them. Exactly, and the British and Australians and those who share a lot of secrets and intelligence with the United States, they have no idea what are on these laptops that Edward Snowden is now carrying around to places like China and Russia. And countries like China and Russia, while China sent him on his way and the Russians are not giving him refuge there, they must enjoy the opportunity to to have this played out so publicly to, to embarrass the United States? Exactly. So this is a way of these countries to ruffle the feathers of the United States with very few consequences because there is very little the United States can do to punish countries like China and Russia for harbouring Edward Snowden, but it's a way of also just provoking the United States. And for, and for countries like China as well would say, well, you point the finger at us mm. for spying on you and you're spying on your allies, and you're spying on your own citizens. Uh, this does raise a question of hypocrisy, doesn't it, on the oh, US part? Absolutely. And this is the way that uh, it's been played out in, in, in Russia in particular, with this huge hypocrisy with the United States trying to be this country of freedom and liberty and yet is monitoring not only international um, governments, but also its own citizens. What would motivate someone like Edward Snowden, not just to release the information, but the public way he's gone about it, fleeing the United States, essentially saying goodbye to the life that he enjoyed there, and the pro real prospect of never being able to go back, if he does go back, face a very long time in prison. Yeah, well, this is, uh, this is the thing that's puzzling a lot of people. Because on the one hand, um, even those who say that Edward Snowden is a whistleblower, he's a hero, he's a patriot, for being able to see that the US government is taking liberties with in its intelligence by spying on its own people. Mm. So he's going to you know, blow the lid on, on this program. And he's made a calculated choice. So he knew that he was going to need to flee the United States if he wasn't going to go to prison. So even, even so, there is this calculation there. But what he's done since is puzzling. He's gone to China, to Russia, and now off to, like, looks Perhaps most likely Venezuela. to Venezuela. And, and losing and support, do you think, in the, in the meantime? I think so. I mean, even if, if he had have stayed to face the music, I think it would have been much easier to to make him into a poster boy, a, a hero of the civil liberties movement. Uh, whereas when he goes to seek refuge in these, in these countries that take a much firmer stance mm. on freedom of speech, it's much more difficult to hold him up as a hero. What's the chances of the US getting their hands on him again? Um, well, that's, we're, that's, we don't, don't know the answer to that. Um, I mean, there, there is a way of... If you guess of, Venezuela, unlikely. Unlikely, exactly. Um, these countries are unlikely to extradite him back to the United States. So he, he stayed in Russia. Um, I think that President Putin has said that he can stay in Russia as long as he stays quiet. Mm -hmm. um, he's not, not allowed to... Um, be a propagandist against the United States, but he's, he's willing to stay in Russia if he does do that. Um, and Ecuador seems to have closed the door. Yeah. It looks most likely now he'll go to Venezuela, and if he gets to Venezuela, he'll probably spend most of his days there. If he was to go back to the US, though, what would await him? 
Um, so they were charging with espionage um, under the Espionage Act of 1917, and they'd be looking at about five to ten years in jail. Contrast his case with the Bradley Manning case, which of mm. course is underway at the moment, and Manning being charged with, with uh, giving aid to the enemy, mm. uh, in this case information that may have assisted the groups like Al-Qaeda. How does Manning compare to Snowden? Um, so they're, they are quite different. Um, so the Manning affair, he was an American soldier and he released you know, classified material, detailed material um, out to WikiLeaks and the United States government has thought that this has been able to aid Al-Qaeda which is the enemy and now is throwing the book at him on aiding the enemy which is a much more serious charge. Mm. Because it was now, indiscriminate wasn't it? The information was just flooded. E exactly. So um, Manning had access to 700 thousand files which he just released to WikiLeaks and now you can you can plow through these files and most of them are pretty much useless a lot of them are just embarrassing cables between mm. um, n normal government business and there's been a few um, you know important things like the Apache helicopter mm. attacks and I think that if Manning had have just released the you know things like the Apache helicopter attacks, you could say that he was trying to seek justice. Uh, and Snowden, the, the in, in, in Snowden's case, how does he compare? Um, so Manning? Snowden had a purpose. So he wanted to blow the lid on the government surveillance of the United States citizens under this program called PRISM. Um, and what that was about was just data mining. So the United States government was collecting phone records on uh, particularly from Verizon users, um, because if in case they wanted to use it again. Now, Snowden thought that this was you know, an attack upon civil liberties, particularly the Fourth Amendment, which the government would need probable cause to go out and collect evidence on their citizens. And this is just collecting evidence in case they were ever going to use it again. So there was firm you know, Fourth Amendment purpose to this. He went to The Guardian, released these documents uh, to support his argument, um, but he, he seems to have only released enough documents to make the case. So he said that the government has this operation against its own citizens, but it also has these other programs on the side against international governments, these SPR. So it's a much more targeted... It's, and and the, the documents that he's released to journalists seems to be more limited, mm. um, and it's been just to support his claims. Now, what we're unsure about is, well, what else he has access mm. to, and now that he's travelled off to places like China and Russia, and we assume that everything he has on his computers but is now in the hands yeah. in, of China and Russia, this is a worrisome to the United States and to other friendly governments. What about Julian Assange, who's also maybe looking at this and saying, well, Bradley Manning's fate may very well be my fate. Um, you look at the way that Snowden's being pursued, I may, I'm also being pursued in that way. Does he also have a legitimate case now to say, look, I could be in that same situation. Um, so Julian Assange's position is very different. So Julian Assange has been a distributor of these documents. Now what needs to be established is that Julian Assange went up to um, Bradley Manning and asked for mm. the documents. Now if um, Assange went up to Bradley Manning and said, can you please hand over these 700,000 documents, then he could be up for espionage charges because he's trying to extract information which is classified. But Assange now, says he's a journalist. He's, exactly. he's using information that was given to him. Exactly. Now, if Manning only went and presented this information to Assange and all he did was publish it, he probably doesn't have a case to answer. He probably has the same case to answer as The Guardian did. When the New York it, Times. And the New York Times when they published information from both Bradley Manning and now Snowden. What does this do now for the future of, of whistleblowers? Um, we're looking at the Snowden case, the Manning case, obviously high profile cases, but are people going to feel more intimidated because you know, it's widely acknowledged that blowing the whistle can be useful in a democracy, in fact essential often. Mm. Well this is the point. The United States has a massive intelligence community. There are five million people in the United States with some sort of secret clearance, some sort of classified intelligence clearance. Um, of those, about 1.5 million have the top secret clearance. So they're trying to deter these people from blowing the whistle. That if you can't, this is a very huge, this is a huge community mm. of people. And you need to be able to deter them some way to make sure that not, you know, if, if only, you know, one, two, three percent 
of these people are you know, loose cannons. They're likely to spill the beans, to blow the whistle on some of these programs. This is still a large number of people. Mm, and mm. so they're throwing the book at these targets and making a big deal about it to deter the others from not blowing the whistle and releasing these secrets. And just finally, Adam, is the reality here that the technology has now, you know, the genie's out of the bottle. The technology now gives people the capacity to be able to, to spread information much more quickly, to get access to information far more readily and that the law hasn't even caught up to where the technology is right now. Well, I think evidence of that is that they're still persecuting people under the Espionage Act of 1917. Mm, mm. And these type of releases of information have always happened, but in the days of photocopiers, they would have needed to stay there and mm. photocopy the evidence. And now people like Bradley Manning can release you know, hundreds of thousands of files instantaneously. Yeah. Good to have you here. A pleasure always to have you on the program. Thank you, Stan. Thank you so much. Adam Lockyer there from the US Studies Centre.